Good morning, everyone. Oh, this is good for the soul. This feels nice, hearing the surf. So much interesting pieces of driftwood here. If you were a folk art person, you can, you can really make something funky with all of this stuff. Go and explore and Pacific Ocean. And here's the next cove. Here's Mike right there. He got ahead of me. I believe that either that one right in front of him or the one past it is Raft Cove, the provincial park. This is all linked together. There we go. Found what we're looking for. Let's go up and have a look. So a loco had built this cabin and uh, not well kept secret. Everybody knows about it. So it's already occupied. You can it's cute. Kind of what you uh, come out here. This is your little front deck. <laughs> the beautiful little wood sculpture. Mi casa is tu casa. Uh, my house is your house, I think. And this is what you get to see. Oh, the sun's come out. On this beautiful little west coast paradise. And look at that. That's a good way to enjoy your evening, eh? There's a girl staying in there. She's actually leaving. I think she's the tomorrow morning. We might come back and have a look on the inside. Well, it's afternoon after lunch. We decided to take a walk with the dogs. We've gone south on the road here and we've walked for probably just slightly over a kilometer and got to Raft Cove Provincial Park. So this is Raft Cove Provincial Park. This is, uh, oops, let me back up a bit here. So this section in here is where um, Palmerston is and uh, I guess that's the parking area. So that's the trail to Raft um, to Palmerston and Raft Cove is here. So let's go have a look. All right, look at that, you got a little, little creek running. That's cool. Yep. Oh, Maggie. Oh, do you need to lay down in the mud? Do you? Oh, she was just literally in this puddle here. Oh my goodness. Wolf country. Don't run, act big, fight back. Okay guys, that was just tiring because, because I am such a wuss. Oh my God, what is going on here? Oh, which provincial government do I write to and ask about why is there not a helicopter that takes me here? Oh my goodness, look at this, folks. This is Raft Cove Provincial Park. I kind of figure it was slightly over a kilometer of just, oh man, brutal, nasty trails. Here's some garbage, I'm gonna pick that up. Why would you do this? This is also annoying. And now I gotta carry all your whoop, whoop, whoop. now I gotta carry all your crap back. Oh my goodness. Oh look at Maggie and Daisy. You guys are so happy. Oh my god. Dude, I don't have enough hands for this.
So we just ran into a couple of locals here. Oh, you can see them, they're right there. Um, they're from Port Hardy, which is on the other side of the, the northern tip of the island. And they give us some tips on how to get back. Um, give us give us an idea of what to what to expect and they said it's pretty it's pretty easy you just got to look for certain things right so we're hoping to avoid major scrambling on these on these rocks because that's just not nice so gentle walk could be good so he said to climb the rope just kidding we're gonna go this way that's probably like oh we're screwed kind of <laughs> rope but we're gonna go this way here Oh, look at that. Well, this is pretty. I think so. This is so pretty. There's a little, little wall right here. I know it's kind of dark on camera. There we go. You can see it now. Just goes around. Oh, this is pretty. So there's a little river right there and uh, the dogs had a lovely little drink we both dipped our heads in the water to cool off a bit because it's hot and uh, now we're just going to continue along the beach see if we can spot the cabin okay three bears one right by the blue barrel one slightly down and then one off in the distance yeah so I've got uh, just a quick little uh, found found rope here because, of course, silly me, didn't bring a leash. Because why would I bring a leash in wolf and bear country? Yeah, I don't know why you would. Yeah. All right, so here's the deal. Of course, luckily on the beach, luckily on the beach is all these little strands of rope. Um, so. My former life of uh, climbing instructor and uh, rock climbing instructor, I know enough knots. Oh, there goes the bear running up the shore. So one, so two, so two is up on the hill. One is still on the tidal flats. There's one. There's two. There's three. So the deal is, we fashioned uh, a couple of leashes because I'm too dumb to bring a leash with me to go walk my dogs. <laughs> um, so that's my bad. With my former life as a, as a climbing instructor, I know enough about ropes to tie, to strand all of these together with some fancy knots. They're relatively structural. I wouldn't want to climb on it, but there's not enough dog strength to pull these things apart. So we're good, we've got long lines. We're gonna slowly move ahead. Mike, um, Mike's got a bit of experience bear. I, I live in the North Shore with a bit of experience bear. So, all right, let's see what happens. Humans coming. Three dogs. Hey -o! Making lots of noise. No! Up! Get out of here. Up! Go on. That's it. There they go. That's what we wanted. We wanted them to be scared of humans. Make a run for it. Up! Up! Go on. Rub, rub, rub. Go on. Yep. There we go. That's exactly what we wanted. Okay, so we're just we just want to sneak by them on the beach. So make lots of noise. Keep going. Made lots of noise. Secured the dogs. Made it past. Daisy was barking, uh, which is good. Lots of noise. The bears. Uh, the mama bear uh, had a good look at us. The state the longest. The two juveniles were gone. Mama Bear just kind of, we never, obviously never got between us, uh, her and the cubs. Mama Bear stayed the longest, made enough noise, she took off, and that's the end of it. We'll, uh, we'll just move along here, get out of the, get out of this little tidal area. Oh, it's been a couple of hours, maybe, oh, sorry, maybe an hour, hour and a half. Uh, I can't remember what time I said, but there is the cabin right there. Basically, it's been circumnavigating the high water mark, and uh, oh, it's hot though. Yep, go for a walk. Don't bring water. Don't bring dog leash. That's how I row. All right, so we've been on the trail for 42 days now. 
and uh, we're bushwhacking. No, we're not bushwhacking. There's actually a faint trail. You got to be, I have to say, you got to be pretty good with trail recognition. All right, so we made it back to the cabin. This is the emergency shelter. You made it. Enjoys it. Please keep this wonderful place off social media. I won't tell you where it is, but... There you go. Look at all these soup cans. That's probably 20 years old. You don't want to eat. There's a little loft upstairs. Danger, do not use stove fire hazard. Yeah, because nothing's attached. <laughs> Everybody's made their little mark on the wall. There it is. It's you. Yeah. Pretty. Vancouver, we love island. I'm hot, I'm cranky. Got to make the, I don't know, 20 minutes back to camp. I'm going to shower and have a beer. Ooh. Not necessarily in that order. There's Daisy. There's Daisy. Oh, she's so done. <laughs> oh, so yeah, we're back at camp. Enjoying the with the well-deserved beer. What do you think, Mike? Was that was that a good one? Ah, uh, it was okay. It was all right. It was possible. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna shower up and have a beer and enjoy ourselves. We're we're actually deep in discussion of philosophical differences. Ah, oh! <laughs> just took a shower, and I didn't bother turning on the the water heater, so it's just the uh, just the the ambient temperature water, which is like probably like 21 degrees. So Mike, I offered Mike my outdoor shower. Um, so he just said, it's, oh, it's a little refreshing, but man, it's nice to get that dirt off of you and the sweat. Ah, oh, man, I was just sitting back. I'm doing the, the traffic watch because I don't have a shower enclosure. It's an outdoor shower, an outside shower, as it were. So I have to give him the heads up <clears throat> if there's a car coming either way. So he has to step around the front of the truck and hide. <laughs> oh, man, beautiful day, blue skies. Let me show you guys. So this is what I'm looking at. So there's uh, there's our truck camper. You can maybe make out Mike's feet down there, but there's the there's a little knoll there, hillside. There's another one right there, and that's where the wolves were last night. Can I go in that way? Oh, it just turned out to be a beautiful beautiful day. Car. And that was my heads up to Mike. There's a car coming, so you have to duck around the front. Because I really had the feeling that after like. You know, a nasty, gross day at camp or for, for whatever reason. You shower and then you're like, I don't want to put mosquito spray back on. There's nothing on your skin. It just feels so much cleaner without bug spray. <laughs> okay. Timber! Ha! Huh? Timber. Timber. No, 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 no. Go on, bear. Go on. Hut. Go on. Man, I tell you, I'm glad I have my eyes open, man. Like I'm, it's not like I'm, it's not like Mike and I are constantly scanning the horizon, but we we got our eyes open. Dogs are inside the camper immediately. Got like Maggie actually saw the dog, started to go, but I got her pretty quick. Daisy, um, Timber saw the do saw the bear as well and started no, to go, no, but no, Timber, no, but go. Mike got him good real quick as well. So, go, go, go. so bear oh ducked into the bush to the left, um, and we'll probably circle around because there's obviously scent of food and all that stuff. I'm cooking just the pasta. That's that's food, right? So we'll just have to be aware. Got two cans of bear spray. I'm gonna bring them both out right now just to have them handy. Um, yeah, we'll go from there. So I'm just having my pasta for dinner. 
a simple pasta but uh, what I've done is um, I moved my camp chair so that I can actually see the entire clearing if the bear circles around because that's pretty much the only way it could come in is through this uh, little clear cut right here um, and I can see this road where it ducked into probably I want to say like 250 meters away that way ducked in the bush so if it comes out that side I can still see it all the dogs are inside the camper uh, Mike is just prepping his dinner I'm having mine and uh, yeah we'll obviously wait another 20-30 minutes and see where we're at but um, just keep an eye on camp right now just gotta be safe right I got my bear spray sitting right on the bumper uh, got another can inside the camper so I got two cans is that a halo photo halo video decided to come down and enjoy the sunset because we haven't seen the sunset in how many days now since we, started the trip. since we started the trip we haven't seen a sunset so we decided to come down and enjoy the sunset this is quite this is too warm in the sun. this is quite lovely it's actually super hot in the sun we need to get in the shade where it's probably minus 20 so it's okay, Well, Mike has a story. <laughs> Tell us what happened there, Mike. Uh, well, I woke up Mr. Bear because he was sleeping about 10 feet away from my toilet last night. I didn't know he was there and I kind of just was going to, for my toilet and he jumped up and blah! So, yeah, a good 10 foot encounter. <laughs> Woke me up, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, that explains why you say I've been up for a while now. Yeah, I'm really awake now. <laughs> I'm really awake. <laughs> Don't need coffee this morning. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, we're on our way out of town. Town being side of a parking area. The camping was not spectacular because you're just on the side of a road. But uh, man, I tell you, that wild BC coast, just amazing. So we uh, just did our little catch up with email, etc., in Port McNeil. And we decided to take a little side track to a place called Telegraph Cove. It's got a huge amount of history, and what I'm hoping for is to uh, just have a quick stop, have a look at the little history side of things, and then we'll keep going. This is the The whole sawmill cutting wood to make bosses of salted salmon, blah, blah, blah. But above the end of the boardwalk site of the original telegraph station for Northern Vancouver Island, originally built in 1911. The families lived in these little houses, in little numbers. Super cool. Armitage House. The oldest building. This one right here. One of the mill employees, Colin Armitage. Nakamura House. So each one of these things had historical value. That's really cool. Look at this beautiful little cove. So with everybody up there. Look at the size of this thing. It's a much bigger house comparatively. Although it's probably two units. Look at this old Dodge. Dodge truck. First bunkhouse. Oops. I don't think you could stay in these things, can you? Oh, you can. These are um, this particular one you can rent. Oh, neat. That's the little tour. This is the end of the boardwalk here. Just thought to come down and show Mike. This is a really, really cute area. I really like it. Um, anyways, we're going to turn around and keep going back to Nimkish. Back in Nimkish. Oh man. So we're back here. This is the, uh, the campers right up there. Oh man. Refreshing. Not a long day of driving, but uh, still nice to just get in camp and chill out. 
Well, I'm in a lazy, lazy day, so we're gonna go for a paddle. I'm gonna go to the, so the wind's going this way, so we're gonna paddle out that way, because it'd be way easier on the way back. Um, so this is the, so the beach that we're at is where all the windsurfers hang out, and um, on the other side of the lake is where all the kite boarders hang out, and the kite boarders hang out at, um, their camp is actually on that side, because um, they just have two different camps. Uh, so there's our site right there, the two truck campers, and here comes Mike and Timber. Look at that, Timber is just chilling over the backside. And there's Timber, star of the show. <laughs> he loves these little rides. Yeah, look at him, he's already asleep. Yeah. <laughs> Size is this lake, it's amazing. So, we're not quite at the sandy beach yet, which is right there. I pulled out this little spit here, and because uh, I saw this thing, I thought, oh, man made structure. Mammy structure, let's go have a look. Look at this. Beautiful, beautiful surrounding. Well, so the wind spent half an hour, so it's 30 minutes here. Wind on our backs going that way, so it's probably a lot less. Timber is all snuggled up there. That's just beautiful. Dinner time. So, what's on the menu today, you might ask? What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bacon wrap scallop with garlic prawns. Um, haven't decided what's going to be the side yet. Uh, I'm going to start with that and see what happens. Now, all I'm doing is just um, pre-cooking the bacon just a little bit. Once it's cooked a little bit, um, when it's almost ready, I'm going to wrap it around the scallops and uh, put the whole thing back onto the pan. Well, I made a small miscalculation. I forgot to take the the prawns and the scallops out of the freezer, so they were like frozen when I when I started cooking. Uh, I left them out for 15 minutes, but they were rock solid. So, anyways, I had to start with that. So the problem is that I couldn't wrap the bacon around the scallop. So normally to do uh, normally to do a wrap uh, bacon wrap scallop, you wrap the bacon around the scallop, put a skewer through it. But being frozen, I couldn't physically put the skewer through. Uh, I could do it now, but it's super hot and I can't really handle it. So it'll be bacon draped over the scallop. Still looks good though. Here we go. Dinner is plated. So instead of the scallops being wrapped, yeah, just sitting on top. That's fine. You'll still have bacon flavor. Well everyone, thanks for sticking with me for another video. Uh, I want to take this opportunity, the last two minutes, to do a quick pro tip on bears. Uh, so in my backyard here, I have a pretty large yard and uh, we used to get a lot of frequent visits for black bears. Uh, they're habituated bears, which means that they're really used to human presence. Um, I've thrown things at them, yelled at them, and they just look at me. They have no fear of, of human presence. So the trip that we were just on, even though the bears are easily, easily, like almost double the size, like the, the bears we have in my yard, about 400 pounds or so, um, is the biggest ones that I've seen. And the ones that I've seen uh, on the vid, on uh, this particular trip, man, they had to be pushing like 700 pounds. They're, they're big. But the interesting part is that they had um, they had no interest in in the campers, so we didn't have any bears come up to the campers checking out our our food source or anything like that, or not food source, but our our, our campers for food um, because they're simply not habituated. We um, all it took is a little bit of yelling, um, and and the bears took off. Unlike here in the city, the habituated bears, uh, we I've seen people set off bear bangers. They don't have any sense of fear. If you are um, heading out in the woods, if you're unfamiliar with the, with 
um, bear activity. If you go into the parks, like so, for, so for example, provincial parks or national parks, um, the the park rangers will give you advice in the sense of like not to leave your coolers out, uh, not to leave your cooking utensils or anything like that to give bears any uh, reason to check out your campsite. Um, and uh, but if you're going out into the wild in sense of crown land or um, uh, the, for example the recreation sites that we were just at these um, you want to make sure you take care so make sure your food is either cached away so either strung up on trees so if you're in a tent or anything like that string your food up on a tree branch um, and if you're unable to do that uh, there are food storage containers that are bear specific uh, that um, that will survive a bear attack you can purchase them from from a store I've never used one and never had the, uh, the opportunity to but there's plenty on the market you can check out if you can at all don't um, don't cook in your um, don't cook in your tent don't cook near your tent and if it's a particularly heavy bear activity area you may even consider cooking two three hundred meters away from your tent even to the point of cooking and eating your food in in one set of clothing and then changing and leaving all that clothing all the food all everything at the cooking site and then going over two three hundred meters away sleeping in a completely scent free clothing that doesn't smell like steak or or um, food like that all right anyways hope that's helpful um see you guys in the next video